folks, Trent is here from Alpha Kettlebell Fitness, and just wanted to bring you a couple quick tips for my good buddy Jason Reimer and all his all his crew that's doing the good work that they're doing over in North Carolina with him. Um, a lot of people, if you're not a fitness professional, might not have as many kettlebells as I might have or other fitness professionals. So one of the things that I've been really working on lately is better ways and more effective ways to use smaller or less kettlebells. So what we're going to do is one of the movements, the cornerstone movements, especially getting into to kettlebell lifting, is a deadlift because it teaches really basic slope strength based progressions. Now often times people think, well I can do that pretty easily with two, hand, two hands type deadlift, where do I go now that's not too advanced, not too far along the line. So what we're going to show you today is several different vari variations and progressions that you can use whether you're going from the really basic positioning or moving on up into some more advanced stuff. I've got some stuff written down here, hopefully I don't forget any of the other stuff. So obviously <clears throat> basic deadlift position is basic hip hinge action, right? You line your heels up with tall chest, good posture, hinge back, knees are bent, but we're not using the knees to change elevation quite as much, pushing into the hips, right? So we got our classic two hands deadlift as such, and back up, real simple stuff. All we have to do to give it a little change of variation is just to go one hand. So we're just starting to work into the anti-rotational world of things. So just one hand here, because the tendency is to reach over and torque back out. So we want to stay squared in the front, nice and simple, and this just is going to add a little more A little bit knee bendy on my part there. It's just going to add a little more upper body demand. From there, we can go straight lateral or suitcase style. <clears throat> now, this is a really, really challenging movement, um, especially with the kettlebell. We're getting a little greater range of motion, squared up to the front. So, we're looking or trying to feel for deviance left and right, hinge back nice and tall up top. Try not to lean over to, to change elevation, so we're pushing back into it and up. All right, very cool, very awesome lift. Probably really, really underused lift. What you want to do is kind of, when you get down to that bottom position, kind of engage and engage this opposite side of, and then come directly up with it, all right? Really simple stuff there. From there, we can go to extended range of motion with two hands. Extended range of motion would simply be adding elevation to our feet and having the kettlebell in between. I don't have anything to make that adjustment today, but that would be another great way to continue to use a lighter kettlebell, whether it's two hands or one hand. So there's two more variations there that you could use by just placing a little elevation, as little as maybe an inch up to maybe two or three inches. Usually bumper plates are really great tools for this. Um, next, we're going to go, and this is probably one you don't see a whole lot of, is a staggered stance. Staggered stance simply means <clears throat> lining up heel to toe. So I'm going to rely my lead heel up with the kettlebell. I'm just going to come down with my opposite side hand hinge here. What we're doing here is preparing ourselves for the single leg deadlift. Again, it's a unilateral, so we're having to do a little of that anti-rotational component as well. <clears throat> From there, we can take it into the classic and probably what I call the forgotten deadlift, which is just a single leg deadlift with the kettlebell. So we're going to reach back, hinge through. Nice tall posture, point that back toe down to the ground, all the way up, all the way back down, right? Very simple, um, very great tool. That stagger stance <clears throat> deadlift, I'm going to take a quick look here, is a great way to transition to that single leg deadlift. From there, we can obviously go to double kettlebell at some point in time. Most people make the shift directly from the two hands deadlift that I showed you in the very beginning to a double kettlebell deadlift. Awesome deadlift. It puts a little more pressure, obviously, in load and stability and strength on our upper body, but we're just here pushing through and up, hinge back down, and up, hinge back down. So there it is. Obviously, you can go back and double load all those other drills as well. So obviously, you can't double load the single hand drills. But like if you wanted to double load your staggers, you could absolutely do that. So there's about 10, 12 different ways you can take these deadlifts. These are 16 kilo, 35 pound kettlebells. They can be used for a vast variety of things. If we program them properly, our lighter kettlebells, whether it's one or you have a pair of lighter kettlebells, can still be highly, highly useful. So hopefully you enjoy these tips. Continue to get the great workouts you've been getting with Jason, and we'll talk to you very soon.